Hi and welcome to News Now. I'm your host, Maribel Carvajal de Salazar. Today we are in this beautiful porch with Mary Bradley. She's the founder of Porch Fest and Elizabeth Dion. She's one of our hosts for a Porch Fest. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thanks. So happy to be here. So let's go back to history. What's Porch Fest? Belmont Porch Fest started in 2018 and we've done it every year except for 2020 when with COVID we had to take a hiatus and we're back this year with our most ambitious year yet. We're going to have a palooza in one of the parks with student performances and an art, all ages art um, event that everyone can participate in. What is the reason that motivates you to start this? Uh, Great question. I started this because I played in a porch fest and had such a great time. There are so many people dancing and just having such a wonderful time that I thought we should have it here in Belmont. I really appreciate your work. I have been enjoying the ones that we had. And this year we're going to have so much fun. I think we all need the extra social part. So that's when you want to be the host. And this is what is, what is the number of years that you have been in it. This will actually be the third year that we hosted. I think we wanted to participate the first year, but by the time I realized what was going on, you had happily more porches than bands, which is great that people are so excited about this. Uh, so we hosted in 2019 and then 2020, the, the pandemic. Um, and 2021, last year, we ended up hosting uh, the Powers Music School faculty, and it was so much fun. Uh, that Gavin Farrell, who's the director of the Powers Music School, and I talked and thought, let's have a repeat performance. So they're, they're coming back. Um, in part, I think if you know your band, you also know an audience that might be interested. And so I feel like this year, given that I know what's coming, then I can target outreach to people who might really enjoy hearing some of the Powers Music School faculty. And what do you think is the most important part in this activity? Oh, by far, I think the most important part is community building. We just live in such a busy world, and so much happens, you know, electronically over the internet, but I just don't think anything replaces seeing your neighbors face to face and knowing what their names are and who they are and recognizing them on the street. It just is a really wonderful way to build a sense of community. So I think Porch Fest accomplishes many things. Uh, but the thing that I really value about it is just a chance to say hi to your neighbors and get to know them a little bit better. I love that. And that's because of you. And we're going to have fun this year. Uh, so tell me, what do you need right now from the community to know? Uh, well, right now, the registration is open on our website, BelmontPorchFest.org, and it's open until August 1st. So if anybody is interested in hosting or performing, Go to our website right now and register. If you've already registered your porch, make sure you get in the waiver that the town requires because that's like one of the things that I spend a lot of time tracking. Um, and then if we, uh, once you have your waiver in, we'll put signs in your yard and keep the signs up, especially our sponsor sign since that's how we pay for Porch Fest. Um, and volunteers, we always need volunteers. This year with the art project, we have a Belmont High School grad who's leading that, and she requires a lot of assistance with that. She'll um, mostly students, and students all get community service. So it's a great way for kids to get community service and be involved and do something with their friends that's a lot of fun. So people can also register at the website. And you, if you don't have the purchase space, but you are an artist, they can sign up as well, right? That's absolutely right. And as would ha what happened with Powers mu Music and Elizabeth, a lot of times people make these connections and they repeat the next year. And it's, it's fabulous. Um, I have people who, have, who met the first year and are back on the same porch this year. And, uh, and just as you said, it, it, it just builds the community. And also, I've heard stories of people who have lived on a street for 20 years, have seen their neighbors for 20 years, and have never had an excuse to say anything to them. And then Porch Fest happens. They're at the same place. They start talking. They're friends. It's such a, it's, it's fabulous. How many porches you have signed up now? Ah, we have 
50 porches signed up right now. We have 43 performers signed up right now. This is typically how it goes, that the porches sign up faster than the performers. Uh, around the first or the second, I'll start getting emails from performers saying, oops, <laughs> we forgot. Um, so, so we're very accommodating as long as we can be. In uh, early August, Donna Ruvalo and I sit down and we match all the porches and performers. So we do have uh, a deadline. It would be great if everybody could, could register by August 1st. But the event will run from 11 o'clock until 6 o'clock on porches from 11 until 5. And then in, in our Park Palooza is going to start we don't know yet. Um, it depends on how many people register, but it'll start in the afternoon and go until six o'clock at night. And at, we're gonna have a grand finale with the marching band and School of Honk playing together. So. That's so cool. And how many porches have we had in the past? Um, we have had between 60 and 80 porches in the past. And we've had between 75 and 90 performers Let's talk about the music. Let's describe what type of music you had last year. We had two really different groups. And I think that's one of the really fun things about Porch Fest is there's such a variety and people in the community can find anything they want to hear. So the first group that we had was a brass quintet. And um, among other things, they played a selection of songs for brass quintet from uh, West Side Story by Leonard Bernstein. And let me tell you, you haven't heard I Feel Pretty until the tuba is playing it. <laughs> and when you can hear the tuba playing, I feel pretty, it was hilarious. But they were really, really good. Um, it was so much fun. And then the second group that we had was a jazz trio. And again, these folks are just world-class musicians. And here we were having this free concert on um, on our front lawn basically and it was really fun because what you would see cars that were driving by and they'd suddenly stop and roll down their windows and listen for five or ten minutes and then they'd go on so there's a really sort of lovely casual drop in drop out feel but but it was really fun it, they were so different to have a brass quintet which does a lot of more classical music and then a jazz trio but, but there's such variety so people can find whatever they want to listen to now, you mentioned the Park Palooza. I want to hear everything about it. <laughs> sure. Well, the Park Palooza um, actually came out of last year. The high school marching band played at Winbrook. And almost everybody who was in the audience was there because they were at Joey's Park. And it was packed. There were so many families there. And they had such a great time. And the flag guard was there as well. And it just there was just this lovely synergy where kids were performing to kids and their family. And so the younger kids were getting these role models and the older kids were getting these accolades. And it just it just like tapped into the spirit of Porch Fest that we decided we wanted to do that again this year, but build it out. So include palms, include Chenery, include the, f the students from Powers Music. So we're gonna have lots of students performing, but we don't know how many are gonna sign up. So we don't know the exact hours of it yet. And then we're gonna culminate with the grand finale with School of Honk. Meanwhile, we will also have an, a community-wide, all-ages art project that, um, is going to be people will be given a four by four canvas to color on in a certain color uh, or, or using a certain group of colors and then when we put it together we'll knock on wood make a larger mural um, and and uh, the theme of that is for people to draw something that got them through COVID either you know a, a, a plan they had for when COVID ended or um, games with family or you know a new dog or whatever it was and or they can write they can write a story and they can use multiple uh, canvases to write the story that we will then include all over the canvas so you have to kind of hunt for the story so keep we're keeping our fingers crossed that this will all come together um, it's uh, but it'll be fun to make and fun to participate in and thank you so much both of you and Mary Thank you for the work you're doing for our town. And we are all invited to enjoy this talent and fun activity. And we'll see you there on September. September 10th, rain date the 11th.
I'll see you on September 10th. That was it for today. I'm your host, Maribel Carvajal de Salazar. See you next time.